Welcome back to This Is Van Color. Our featured guest tonight is one of the greatest professional wrestlers ever. He's quite literally done it all. He's headlined WrestleMania, he's won the King of the Ring, Money in the Bank, and the Royal Rumble twice. An 11-time world champion, a 14-time tag team champion, and the current All Elite Wrestling TNT champion. You think you know him? Well, he's beaming into studio tonight. AEW's Rated R Superstar, hailing from Orangeville, Ontario, he is Adam Copeland. Adam, hello. Howdy. Thanks for having me. That, that was a heck of an intro. I got to live <laughs> up to that. Well, thank you so much for being here. Now, whether it's the championships, the the moments that you've given fans, the laughs, the emotions, what's your secret to staying relevant and still engaging stadiums of people for over 30 years in such a physically and mentally demanding craft? Um, I, I think more than anything, it's just the joy of telling stories and and, and tapping into that creative vein uh that telling stories you know is and, and whether that's the physical aspect of of pro wrestling or whether that's um you know acting on a in a show um it, it's telling a story you know i've also related it to, it's almost like stand-up comedy um in that you're live right with wrestling we're live and you're out there without a net um there's a lot of place to keep in the air and if your set isn't killing then you, you gotta you gotta pivot and you got to pivot live. That's really <laughs> fun. And I think that for me has always been the the the, the most um, the most exciting challenge that that pro wrestling kind of offers is uh, is that live element, that instant gratification to know what you're doing is working or it's not working, and having to, like I said, pivot and change on the fly. Well, you've definitely given us a whole host of characters to enjoy over the years. Now, Canada has produced some wrestling legends, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, Roddy Piper, Trish Stratus. You look at the current AEW roster, yourself, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, Kyle O'Reilly, Christian Cage. Does Canada get its due both within Canada and internationally for, you know, being a wellspring of wrestling talent? I, I mean, I think so. I, I think just because, uh, you know, it's kind of a murderer's row of, of talent in terms of, um, you know, if, if you if you've made it uh, and you're from Canada, there's a reason why, because it is harder. It is harder when you're from Canada or Australia or Ireland or, or any of these places. It's gotten easier since the advent of social media. Don't get me wrong. But I, I think if you broke and you're from Canada, there's a reason. And um, generally speaking, Canadian talent are always well versed in being um, adaptable. Hmm. Like you can throw a Canadian wrestler in there with anyone and they're going to adapt. And I don't know if that's what we watched or what we were raised on and, and stampede wrestling in Calgary and, and all kind of cutting our teeth with that and growing up with that. And, and it was a very stacked roster in terms of those abilities. I, I don't know if that's why, but I, I think the rest of the world understands it and, and is like, okay, ooh, if they're Canadian, they, they can probably go. That's great to hear. Now, there is an incredible clip from the Deanie Petty show, an old Canadian daytime talk show where <laughs> you, I think you were maybe 19, you're asking <laughs> Brett the Hitman Hart for advice about how to get into the big leagues. And of course, you know, there are great promotions here in BC. I think you yourself have shouted out all-star wrestling right here in Vancouver. So. Uh -huh. In this social media age, what advice would you have for an up-and-coming BC wrestler who dreams of stepping into an AEW ring? You know, it's really interesting. And now that I'm kind of uh, more in, in Brett's shoes that he was in when I asked him on D.D. Petty, it's hard to answer because you get so far removed from the beginning of your career and, mm -hmm. and how to break in. So when I broke in, you carried a VHS tape with you and you just gave it to whoever might get it into the hands of a promoter and who like might a mixtape <laughs> yeah yeah wow. seriously and, and, and you you carry this thing around and maybe a resume and a picture and hope that they would give it to a promoter and or not be jealous and go i'm not going to give this to anybody and chuck it in the trash <laughs> now you got social media right so you can get your stuff stuff out there much easier but i'm still removed from it because uh you know, I'm 32 years into my career, so I'm, I'm much closer to the end of my career than the beginning. So in terms of like what to do nowadays, I, I'm not entirely sure, but there's one thing that I can always say, and that's just train properly, get your fundamentals, um, read books. You know, uh, I, I get so many ideas from just reading 
or, or mm-hmm. watching a, a character in a movie and why it affected me, or even just watching a band and going, or watching how they play with an audience and how they elicit reactions. Um, the dynamic, the group dynamic is, is something that, um, it takes work to, to understand like how to pull the strings of a, a large audience, but it's really, really fun. Now, is it true that Bret Hart actually apologized to you for not giving you good advice? <laughs> How Canadian is that, right? I mean, so he, he was sorry. Ask, he, yeah, he did. I yeah. swear to you. Um, but it also taught me going forward of, of, you know, kind of how to conduct myself. And, uh, you know, Brett was one of my heroes, still is. Mm-hmm. And as a Canadian, seeing him make it to the very top of the industry when that that really didn't happen for Canadians, uh, that, that was massive. So the fact that he found me after the show in a back hallway and came up and he did he goes i'm sorry you know very very canadian sorry um and was apologetic and and just said hey man just just keep plugging away and um and eventually uh about a year and a half later i was at his house training with him wow. so it, it, yeah yeah <laughs> so he didn't he put his he put his money where his mouth was and and he uh he really cracked some doors for me well, that's definitely one way to say I'm sorry. Now, uh, right? All, yeah, right. <laughs> now, All Elite Wrestling makes its Vancouver debut at Rogers Arena for an episode of Collision on Saturday, May 11th. For someone who has never been to an AEW show or let's say even a wrestling show, what can they expect? Here's what I love with AEW and what it brings to the table. It, it, it's young and it's exciting. And even for me as a performer at 50 years old, I, I'm always looking for new challenges. And when I looked at this roster, it just, man, it it, uh, it got me excited. And, and it's part of the reason why, you know, after 25 years, I left WWE to come to AEW because I mm-hmm. looked at all of these talents that I'd never, never touched, never, never performed with, created a story with. And also, again, just the, the, the atmosphere. You know, the great thing about an AEW crowd is you'll have some dude come dressed up as Jesus. You'll have a dude dressed <laughs> up as the Macho Man. You'll have, I mean, you'll have one person dressed as Chucky. Everybody's just coming to have fun. And that's, to me, what professional wrestling has always been. It's been an outlet to forget about the boss, to forget about the, the bully, to forget what, just about whatever it is, and just dive into this theater of the absurd. And um, and that means larger than life characters, and that means explosions, and it means music. And it's it's this giant fondue melting pot of, of entertainment. You know, it's like going to a rock and roll show. It's like going to stand up. It's like going to theater. It's like going to an athletic event. Um, because you're going to see things in AEW, like there's this guy, Will Osprey, who just joined our company. He does things that the human body shouldn't be able to do. And it's (laughs) fascinating. It really is. It's fascinating to watch. I'm just like, well, how do you even think of that? Let alone go, I can do that. I, I don't know, but it's sure fun to watch. We are now in the podcast extension part of my chat with All Elite Wrestling's Adam Copeland. Adam, thanks so much for sticking around, man. Yeah, I mean, my, my daughters are, are getting ready to pounce here, so. <laughs> <laughs> we won't keep you too long. I, I, I got to ask you, good. I got to ask you, is it weird to have grown ass men come up to you and be like, oh, my God, you're my favorite. I watched you when I was a kid. TLC, man. Uh, you know what? Um, you know, it, what was fascinating when I was forced to retire, um, I had many grown men come up to me and say I was in tears. Um, (laughs) and at first I was like, oh, wow, like, you know, we're just jumping around in spandex. But then I think back to when I was a kid and, and how it really affected me and how wrestling was that outlet for me. And it it really just became this, this world to escape to, um, it was like comic books. It was like, you know, uh, you know, watching uh, clips of kiss and, and these larger than life things, except wait, I could go down to Maple Leaf gardens and I could possibly slap hands with Hulk Hogan. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) So when, when I stop and think back and, and realize how it, strangely can make a difference and uh even if it's just to to make somebody laugh or even if it's you know uh make somebody smile that's the gig that that's mm-hmm. what you get into it for um is to try and replicate what you felt as a kid if you grew up loving it absolutely now i feel like even in the last 15 years 
the culture has just changed a lot. And certainly since the late nineties, the culture has changed yeah. quite a bit. I mean, you're the guy that had the live sex celebration on raw, a ratings hit, by the way, you yeah. use some misogynistic language and I'm not shaming you. It was a different era. You were performing to that era, but how have you personally grown from the edge of the late nineties to the two thousands, um, or I should say to the Adam Copeland of 2024? Well, Adam Copeland now would say no to that. But Adam <laughs> Copeland then was like, I guess this is part of the gig. And, right. you know, I guess this is what I got to do. Um, knowing even at the time, even with time differences or anything like that, it's like, the, well, this sucks. And it did. Um, mm. It really did. But uh, again, it's it's there now. Right. But uh, now I have the confidence in myself, confidence as a performer to know, no, nah, I don't got to do that. I bring more than that to the table. Um, I, I can do more with my eyes than I can with, you know, trying cheap stuff like that. Um, so that's nice that the mm -hmm. industry has grown from that because, you know, it's, it's easy to go for the low, low hanging fruit. And I think that's one thing that wrestling did a lot of. And, right. and thankfully, I think has learned its lesson. I think as society has progressed, as as um, as everyone has just kind of progressed and moved forward, I think thankfully it has too, um, which wasn't always the case. It, it could kind of be the outlier who was left lagging behind. But I feel like now, now it's it's different and, and in a good way. If there was a young guy up and coming, maybe still on the indies and, and maybe they were asked to do something that they were uncomfortable with stuff, stuff that, that was trying to recreate the attitude era, what advice would you give them if they were uncomfortable with doing that? Well, I think you, you just got, what, what are you comfortable with? And, but not only what are you comfortable with, but what are you comfortable with living possibly forever? Hmm. Um, that's a big decision to make now. Right. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with no matter what your age going, nah, I think I'm good. You know, um, the, the power of no is is a beautiful thing. That's great advice. Now, I'm so sorry. And you, and you can use the power of no for this next question. But I have to ask you, I have to ask you about CM Punk. He had a crazy interview with Ariel Hawani. Did you watch it? I didn't. No, um, okay. I saw a clip. So I, I really I got better things to do, you know, <laughs> I really do. I got kids, uh, you know, I, it's like, I, I don't really care what, what anybody really has to say. However, what I will say is uh, from, from the, the small clips that I think, you know, kind of just in scrolling and stuff you see, I realized that our locker room um, needed a, a good message. So mm -hmm. last week on our show, I went out and, and kind of spoke to that because right. um, it is it's a it's a young locker room and it's a young locker room that uh, that for me um, because it's a different time now um, we try and support each other you know I and and I came into locker rooms where it was everybody out for themselves right. and it was uh, right. it was it was a bunch of great whites and I never subscribed to that I always subscribed to the Bret Hart school of no you can help. And you can help young people and you can try and um, be a positive and, and show that you, you don't got to be a you don't got to be a dick. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how else to put it. I really don't know how else to put it. Um, so if, for me, I try and just focus on on positives. You know, there's so many negatives in, in the world today and they're both there to find. So why not look to the positives? And, and to me, our young locker room needed to hear some positives. So that's why I went out and did what I did last week. Um, but I don't, I don't need to go searching out the other stuff. You know, I can, like I said, I, I got a lot better things to do. I got kids to put to bed. I got the Maple Leafs to watch. Uh, <laughs> I got music Dude. to listen to. <laughs> well, okay. This chat isn't going to be about CM Punk, but and I I'll wanna... watch the Canucks too. Don't get okay, me wrong. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. Because in the West, I hope the Canucks make it through. I do. So. Yeah, us too. Obviously, um, <laughs> obviously, you know, this chat is not going to be about CM Punk, but I just want to point out, you know, that for a guy who said the grass is greener where you water it, he basically called out AEW management and, and talent for unprofessionalism. Uh, I want to ask you, and you can focus on the positives. Was there any culture shock for you starting in AEW? Not at all. It, it's, it's pro wrestling, right? I mean, um, one 
maybe more corporate in terms of shareholders and, mm. and different levels to have to answer to. Um, what I love about AEW is if I have an idea, I sit down with Tony and we go, will this work? That's really fun uh, to be much more involved in the creative process. That's really fun. Um, you know, AEW has been around for five years, so it's just out of its toddler phase. Right. And um, and, and I, I love it. I, just, I love being you know, maybe not on the ground floor, but, you know, maybe on like the first or second floor of this thing and, and helping it grow. Uh, you know, another one of the reasons why I came to AEW is I thought I would have more of an opportunity to help. Mm. And and again, help young talent and and help some of these uh, younger men and women who are really having to learn on national television. Right. We had the luxury before of going to an armory or just going to the local arena and maybe 100 people show up. Right. Yeah. Now, these young folks are learning in front of a national audience. And wow. that is a whole different bag of pressure that I never had to deal with. So if I can be a sounding board or if I can be any form of, of, of advice for the for them, um, that's that's one of the, the major reasons coming to AEW is really important to me. Um, because, yeah, in looking at the roster, so many young people, so many young people that that like I was that kid in the Dini Petty show. Right. And, and what Brett did for me, you got to try and pay that forward. And um, I've been given every opportunity within AEW to do that. Um, and, and that's really fun. So let's let's touch on that a little bit. I, I know that AEW fans are stoked that you're there. Um, a program with Christian Cage was a natural fit, but I'm sure many fans are just chomping at the bit to see you get in a major program with guys that you that they haven't seen you paired up with. Sure. Let's say you get to book yourself. Who would you love to who would you love uh, for for you for them to try to challenge you and, and, and take away that TNT championship away from you? Well, you know, it's interesting, you know, as much as we have 40 years of history, it felt like we had to we had to tackle that first. Yeah. You know, sure. we, we had to tell that story that we both knew we could, but we never uh, as performers, we weren't in the right place when the op we had the opportunity to tell that story before. But I felt like now with all of our experience, with where we are, the stories we've told over the years, with the life we've experienced over the years, now we can tell that story and we did and it was um it was everything i hoped it would be and then some now the, it gets really really exciting because again there is a whole roster of folks that i've never laid hands on samoa yeah. joe claudio moxley kenny omega hangman swerve uh that's just off the top of my head i mean that <laughs> that's that's a year and a half worth of stories right there yeah. let alone the other 20 that i'm not mentioning eddie kingston i mean there's so many um and i think now you're starting to see malachi black and i and house of, house of black that was one that i always always had in my mind i always had pegged that i thought could be some really really fascinating character work uh let alone what you would get with within the phys physicality of the matches totally. so I, I'm in the midst of of having one of the ones that I really wanted, um, but even after this, it doesn't stop. It just it just keeps <laughs> going. Like I've never been in the ring with Kyle O'Reilly, right? Never. Yeah. Um, there's Delta BC's Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, never been in with them. You know, um, there and and you can probably ninety eight percent of the roster I've never been in the ring with. So when I look at that and I look at the challenge of that and also the excitement of that, again, one more reason why I came to AEW. Because at thirty two years into my career, or fifty years old, you know, I, I want challenges. You know, right. I I um I love the idea of being there every week and having a different match every week. Like so far since I've 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 wrestled someone of a different style every week like vastly different which kind of goes back to that whole canadian thing of adaptability right right um i want to see at 50 years old if i'm still that adaptable um so put me in there with a guy like minoru suzuki who helped create mma and pancreas in japan yeah. and let us beat the crap out of each other and then throw <laughs> me in there with dante martin who can fly like one of the best high flyers i've ever seen the following week and it, it it's I'm wrestling Penta this coming week, who who is, you know, a, a famous legendary luchador. That's fun, man. That's just fun. There's no way around it. 
I got maybe the toughest question on deck here. Who's the okay. best wrestler on the planet right now, not named Adam Copeland? Ah, oh, best is so subjective, right? Because um, really everybody's, be yeah. everybody's best is going to be different. And my best could change from day to day. Yeah. Uh, what I will say is my favorite. Okay. Um, my favorite to currently watch. Um, man, I love watching Osprey because <laughs> he can... <laughs> I just can't wrap my mind around it. Um, I love watching Brian Danielson. Um, you know, I, I love watching Hangman. I love watching Swerve. Um, I love watching Damian Priest. I love watching Finn Balor. Um, there, there's so many talent right now that y you can't really go wrong. Like if you're a wrestling fan right now, it is a, it is a really good time to be a wrestling fan because this industry is just – there's so many different things happening right now and so many different talent that bring different things to the table. Mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, again, it, it's that, that, um, melting pot, right. But it's also a melting pot of cultures. It's a melting pot of talents. It's, um, you know, Penta wrestles a completely different style than you normally see in North America. Well, that, that's super fun. And, um, so my favorite right now is tough to narrow down even that, but those are, those are some of them for sure. Uh, you know, Tony Storm, I love watching Tony Storm. She just entertains me to no end. Um, I, I just think she's fabulous. So uh, it's tough. It's tough to narrow down to just one. That's fair. Adam, I know you got to get out of here, but one more question. I think you may be the greatest heel of all time. Is there something about playing the bad guy, like the guy that just everyone wants to see them get their comeuppance that you love? Or are you just like that good at it? Um, you know, it, it's always fun to play a character where your job is to fall flat on your face <laughs> and to have no redeeming qualities. And that, that's easy it's easy to get people to not like you. It's, it's especially in today's climate, it's hard to get an audience on your side. Um, I, I think the only reason I've been able to up until this point is because everyone understands the real story of Adam behind the character and, and the battle to get this thing back after being mm -hmm. forced to retire. Um, so I think now as much as I, it'd be nice to try and be heel, I tried it once and it, it, it failed pretty miserably so <laughs> i don't know if it would work anymore um but uh but it, it was fun while it lasted for sure adam sincerely this has been a trip talking to you so thank you so much tlc forever man <laughs> <laughs> not anymore <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll see <laughs> but so sincerely thank you adam thank you Canucks Folks. lease in the final. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that was All Elite Wrestling's TNT champion, the Rated R superstar, Adam Copeland. Make sure you check out AEW on Saturday, May 11th, here in Vancouver at Rogers Arena. Tickets are still available. Of course, this is Van Color, and I'm Mo Amir, telling you that in a province where you can be anything, be colorful. Peace. Peace.